Ah, itchy nose. G'day guys, it's Jara here, and today we are doing a seven second, seven second riddle. I saw the almighty Ken, Cinnamon Toast Ken, do this on his channel, and I'm going to do what every YouTuber does, steal their content, and do it myself with my own twists and turns, so it's technically my content. So today I'm doing the 13 hardest choices ever, riddle and brain teasers. I love riddles, I'm not great with brain teasers, and I just like to see what they think. So let's have a look. So, um, okay, so the first one says, what would you do to survive? Open the door or break the glass? Um, let's see. It depends how far underwater you are because... If you're quite far underwater, you can't actually open the door because of the force, and you can't really break the window either because, again, force is holding it against it. If you're that far out, I would open the window and get out, as this guy is doing here, because opening the door, you still have that force. So I'm going to say break the glass, just for this. Yeah, I'd break the glass, though. What would you... What would you do to survive plane crash? I mean, we're taught to do both. But because this is an economy, we're going to say, this is I would be doing the lean position. Because the brace position is only if there's no chair in front of you. And by doing that, if it jolts forward, he's going to break his neck. So we're going to say the lean position. Thank you. What's next? What would you do to survive falling down? Try to land on a haystack or a field. Try to land on water. Again, this depends on height. This depends on a lot of things, how full the water is. Because water from a high distance will break pretty much every bone in your body. So I'm going to say try and land on a haystack. Um, or field more haystack than a field. So, yeah, because water will kill you. <laughs> what would you do to survive if you met a gorilla? Sit down and avoid eye contact. Stand still and look into its eyes. Uh, I'm gonna sit down and avoid eye contact because I don't want to be eye contacting with it either and maybe if I sit down it might just like try and nurture me as I've seen it done before I don't know I'm probably wrong oh I'm right that's interesting that's the first what would you do to survive the meta ball I would not be wearing a red shirt <laughs> run away sit stand still distract it with a hat and then throw it away um, distraction is usually a good idea. Running away. Mm. Mm. See, this is where I have the struggle. Because if he was wearing the white shirt, although it is said that it's not the red, it's the motion of it. So I'm going to go with standing still. Because it's motion that gets them to move. Yeah. And because he's running, that brings up motion. Ooh. There are two people in front of you. Damn, this got creepy all of a sudden. Bam, bam. 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 Your friend and imposter looking exactly like your friend. Just say it inside joke and we're good. Bam. There's no way to determine who is who by asking questions. Um, sure, we'll go with that. Bam. Bam. They know the same information about you. Well, you're a horrible friend then. Because some friends know more than other friends. Just saying. You have only one bullet. Get them to stand right in front of each other and just shoot straight through both. Honestly. If you kill or injure the imposter, you and your friend will be saved. So usually how things work, yes. Bam. Bam. If you're wrong, he will kill you immediately. Okay, so only one of us dies. That's cool. I'll take a bullet for a friend. Especially my close friends. How will you know? How will I know which is my true friend? Hmm, good question. Because they look the same, they can't answer questions. So, I'm just going to say shoot one of them in the foot. No, but that counts as injuring. Because um, then it wouldn't kill anyone. And then you'll know which one's your actual friend. That's hard. Because if you've got friends... Yeah, if you have friends, there would be some tell, some symbols, something like, you know, with my friend and I, we do sign language. By sign language, I mean we spell things out because that's all we really know how to do. Um, there would be some tell. How would you know? Your friend would be chill if you shoot them? I don't know. 
Ask them to drop the weapon. The one who won't obey is the imposter. Oh, wait, what? I'm confused. Uh, but they weren't holding weapons. Ask them to drop the weapon. The one who won't obey is the imposter. Kind of confused. The hardest choice would would rather. Um, I will always tell the truth. Because I hate lying to people. It feels horrible. You are a selfless person. I know. Never be able to speak again or have to say everything on your mind. Um, I would love to be able to say everything on my mind because 90% of the time I don't say what's ever on my mind. So be please. You have such a big heart. I try to. Find true love or win a million dollars. I mean, I'm all about love and all of that stuff, but I mean, a million dollars, there's also a lot of tax you gotta pay for, plus a million dollars would really help with, like, aiding my friends right now and just helping my parents out in general. Um, I'm gonna say a million dollars only because I would give it to my parents so then they can pay off bills and things like that. Not to do with me. Plus, who says I haven't found it? Have you heard of Domino's Pizza? You don't really believe in true love. That's also another thing as well. I don't really believe in true love because I believe in love, but not true love. I think that's a bit of a weird thing. Be poor, but be able to help people. Get rich by hurting other people. Be poor, but be able to help people. I cannot hurt other people. It just, it makes me feel so horrible inside. Even when people talk bad about me, I will apologize for them. Like, it's that bad. You care about other people more than yourself? It's pretty much the opposite. Yeah, I care way too much about other people than me. It's kind of sad. Would you rather never have sex or never eat your favorite food? Interesting, because never eat your favorite food. What about if I have multiple favorite foods? Like, I have multiple favorite foods. I, my favorite foods are, you know, pizza, nachos, butter chicken, popcorn. Like, do I just give up one of them? Because it's his favorite, so it's one. So, let's just say I give up on nachos. Or, you know, I love kale chips. I love, you know, that's my favorite healthy food. I'm happy to give that up. So, I'm going to say B. Just for that. Social life is everything to you. Incorrect. Incorrect. I am all about friends and friendship and the power of friends. Woo. Um, and I'm, I love being with people and all that type of stuff. But I do love to have my own moments. I do love to be alone. I'm the person that has a sleepover at someone's house. Comes home and just doesn't want to talk to any human for the next 24 hours. Just because I need my, my me time. So I would say that's incorrectly correct. Be the only one happy in the world or be the only unhappy one. I'd rather be the only unhappy one because <laughs> I already am. Plus, also, I'd rather my friends be happy than sad. Because if I can't help them to be happy, I am more than happy to just show that I'm happy and be unhappy on the inside than all of my friends be unhappy and I can't fix it. Ready to sacrifice for your loved ones. True, sister. Absolutely true. A photojournalist enters the, the dangerous cave to take some pictures. Suddenly, the cave starts shaking. It's trembling with all of his skills. A journalist has to run out. Bing, bing. But he has forgotten which way he's gotten there. There are four tunnels. Poisonous bats will kill you immediately. Cool, cool. So he didn't come from there. Heat from underground will burn anyone. Cool. Nice char. Toxic gas will kill any kind of animal. Radioactive plants will kill you with one touch. Well, I'm gonna go with the gas because I'm not an animal, technically. Well, 
scientifically we are animals, but not in this scenario, I'm assuming. Number three, please. Thank you. I was gonna say, not humans, correct? But you're a human, although humans are technically animals, so I'm gonna give that a pass. A rich man suddenly dies from a cut on his finger. How dramatic. The next day, two men appear to be claimed to be his long lost son. They look exactly the same except one has a business suit. They both fit the description in the will and have all necessary documents. The family attorney proposed a blunt test. One man agrees while the other point blank refuses. The one who agreed was arrested for fraud at once. And The second man was accepted as the heir. Why? Oh, because the king didn't like blood. Maybe, and that's why? Or... He was arrested for fraud? Um, let's see. Maybe because he was trying to imitate the actual heir, which is standing right next to him. I'm gonna go with something along those lines. He was a hemophilic like his father who died from a small cut. That's what I was trying to think. I was like, what's the word? Because, well, like, that's not technically correct. Hemophiliacs don't actually die from small cuts. What happens is their blood just drains out a lot faster. So for him to be able to die, yes, a small cut would have gained a lot of lo blood loss. But probably not enough to kill him. Again, I'm not a doctor or anyone medically professional, so I don't know if that's 100% true, but from what I was taught from doing St. John, which is teaching first aid to people, was that hemophilics only just, they just bleed a lot more. So it would have had to be like a decent sized cut. That's all I'm saying. The blood test would have killed him. Your town blacked out after a massive earthquake. Exploring this mess, some criminals kidnapped you for ransom. Cool, good on them. They keep you in a room with four doors. A death trap will crush you. Chainsaws will cut you into pieces. A professional killer is waiting for you. The acid will burn you at once. Which door is safe? Okay, hold on. Is that acid? Professional killer is waiting for you. I'm going to say the professional killer. Chainsaw will cut you into pieces. Yeah, I'm going to say number three. Because the rest of them is like straight away death. I might be able to make a like a safe bet with the dude. I don't know. Maybe he'll get me out. If he's the police. There's no electricity in the town. Oh yeah. But can't you also just get fuel? Um, Wait. Since when do chainsaws need electricity? Don't you just pour fuel? Brum brum. Cut. I don't have an electric chainsaw. I don't think we have a chainsaw. But, I don't know, that seemed a bit sus. But no, fair point, fair point. Which president we choose? Candidate 1. Drinks 8 to 10 martinis a day. Good on him. Has two wives. Smokes all the time. And seeks advice from an astrologist. Good on you, I guess. Candidate 2. Was removed from office twice. Sleeps till noon. Was into optimum in college. Drinks about one bottle of whiskey every day. Candidate 3. Vegetarian doesn't smink. Smink. Doesn't smoke or drink. Has... Never cheated on his wife has several war medallions. Well, the obvious answer is three, but I feel like it's gonna be one for some stupid reason. I'm a curious though. Oh, these are American presidents I have no idea about. Frank Del Roosevelt. Good on you? I say three still. Winston Churchill. Oh, I've heard of you. Good on you. It's sad that the one with the most, like, is the most normal sounding, is, like, the worst out of all of them. <laughs> Which door will you choose? You're locked in a room. The salvation lies behind the closed doors. A serial killer who killed 300 people in 1890. 1830 degrees Fahrenheit flame, which is a lot higher in Celsius. I don't know what that is actually. Liquid nitrogen that will freeze you.
Uh, cool. I'm choosing the serial killer because he would have been dead because he killed in like what 1890. So he's well off dead. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, serial killer. You come kill me with your bones. Yeah, if you killed him in 19, 1890, he would have died a long time ago, sister. Long time ago. Who would you say first? Family, best friend, lover, one million dollars. See, I could go, like, money way and think money can't float. The rest of them can swim. Family? I have a lot of family. So that's a big pool. Best friends. I got the three close best friends. Um, and lover. See, I would... This is hard because I'm going to say I'm going to leave my best friend because they know how to swim. They all do. So I would let them swim. My family knows how to swim. So does my lover. So I'm still going to let my best friend swim. It's just tough between family and lover. Because all my best friends... I'm going to pick family only because why can't my lover be family? And why can't my best friends be family? Because I call them brothers and sisters anyway. And my lover... If he stays with me long enough, we'll become part of the family anyway. So I'm going to say family for that reasoning. Bam, bam. But it was a toss up between, yeah, one and three. Who would you get your help? Who will get your help here? That was a lot of. English. So there's the kitty. So there's an old guy who needs help across the road. A kitty. A guy fixing his car. And the woman. I personally would help the old guy across the road. I know nothing about cars. I'm happy to assist the lady. But while I'm taking the old guy, can I just pick up the cat along the way? I think that's the better option. So let's do that. Old man, then cat. Now, oh, whatever, boo. Ah. No! Stop looking! Well, that's the end of that video. I'm probably going to do one more of those type of videos, and that's about it. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below, and tell me if you got all of those correct or not. All up to you. Anyway, drop. Dry it out. See you guys in the next video. Whoops, sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. I just ate like half of my own hair.